Hi guys, this is Josh. Welcome to Pomeroy Creative. Hope you're having a great Monday. Uh, today's vlog, I want to just go over this sort of mini magazine that we just uh, put together. Uh, it's the sort of top five tips for this month. And uh, I just wanted to talk about them in this video as well, because I'm not sure everybody's seen the, uh, the magazine that we put out. I'll put a link in the description. You can either follow along with this video or just, just watch the video. Um, but I'm just going to go over each each one of these tips that we, we, we you know we thought this month would be really great to to talk about. The first one is simple shadows, and I want to talk a little bit about uh, sort of my paradigm on on shadows, and uh, and then show you a technique that you can use to to kind of um, you know put shadows into just about anything that you want, but also think about why you would want to do that. Um, drop shadows have been around forever, and, and now they're available in just about any piece of software that you could open up on your computer. I mean, Microsoft Word you can has the drop shadow feature. Pages has all of these new sort of drop shadow features, and you know they have different options now, and you can uh, you can even edit them quite a bit, and that's great. Um, but there's still some you know some places that either don't support a drop shadow feature, or Here's just another thought, is even with like Photoshop, the drop shadow style, there's only so much that you can actually do with that. You can adjust the, the radius of it, how big the shadow is. You can adjust the density, how dark the shadow is. You can adjust the position. You know, is the light coming from the top? So I want my shadow to, to fall down, you know, straight down or off to the side or something. And, and they're supposed to be simple. They're supposed to be sort of, you know, just this little uh, quick way of, of creating depth, you know, from one surface to an object that's sitting on top of that surface, you'd have a shadow. Um, but not everything needs a shadow. And, um, you know, if you're following some of the, 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 the trends out there, especially for, you know, mobile devices and screens and, you know, websites, that kind of thing is, you know, we're, we're finding that shadows are becoming a lot more precise um, and only, only used when necessary. You know, we we want to make sure that, you know, shadows are doing what they're supposed to do, and that's to create depth. And uh, I, I really like Google's uh, surface design um, philosophies. You can find them on, online, do a search, and you'll find they've they put together, there's like a whole website just on, on their, um, uh, they call it material design, I think, it's not surface design, material design. And it's a really great, um, they've, they've put together something really, really great. Obviously, they've spent a lot of time doing it, a lot of thought that goes into it. So that's this part of part of this um, thinking about shadows. And I've, I have a technique that you can follow. You can create a radial gradient just about in any uh, bitmap application. It doesn't have to be Photoshop. Save it as a PNG. And anything that supports a PNG file format and preserves the transparency of those files, you can use these these. Uh, images in and create um, a more unique, more interesting look rather than just a drop shadow. And it's a really great way of giving an object or like say a logo some some weight and giving it a surface to sit on. So just be mindful about your, your shadows. One one design tip is don't don't use drop shadows for legibility. Um, if uh, for example you have like a, a, a white text on a light background Sure, you can pop on that drop shadow and make things more legible, but a better way would be to create contrast. Make sure your typography is great and legible to begin with. You know, choose your fonts more carefully, and and create create more contrast in the color. Um, so if you're in a light background, use a dark font color. You don't even need a drop shadow. And obviously, there's always going to be exceptions to the rules. I'm sure, but think about. Be, just be more mindful. Just don't, don't slap a drop shadow on everything. That quickly things become very amateur looking, and I see this a lot in local publications. So, be careful with your drop shadows. Tip number two: get out of the box and sketch. You know, on paper. Uh, you know, grab a pen or pencil and just start drawing. You don't have to be a really great artist either. To me, it's still like the quickest way to get the ideas in here onto, uh, you know, a, a physical surface into a visual language. And that's what we do as designers, is we're constantly interpreting. 
um, ideas into a visual language. And whether it's our own ideas or somebody else's ideas, it's the quickest way to just to see, is this even a good idea? You know, and we can also share them with other people. So sketch, doodle, you know, draw, uh, put things on paper. This is actually a, a little, little sketch that I did right here at my desk. And this is going to be used. I mean, I actually took a picture of this piece of paper and, and that's what I'm, I, I used as the reference for um, TBC's next sort of, you know, the main theme, the main visual like logo, if you want to call it that, for their conference. I'm sure we'll, we'll have some videos on that coming up. And really, it's, it, it's like I said, it's like the, the most intuitive, the quickest way to translate the ideas in my head into a visual language. And a lot of times, you know, um, I, I treat it like I don't care because that's when I get the best ideas. You know, when I open up Photoshop, I'm immediately into this, this has to be perfect mode. And, and of course, I'm not going to create the best stuff. I'm not going to be the most fluid and sort of organic with, with my, with my uh, expression visually. So, you know, we use computers for that perfection, but perfection is not always what we're after. We're after good design. So tip number three, take photos. Um, you know, I, I, I'm using my phone all the time because it's equipped with a really great camera. And if you have any modern phone... Yours does too. And uh, one, these can be great for, you know, just sort of creating a, a visual reference library for myself. Anything that kind of caps, captures my attention, I want to take a picture of it, save it for later. Um, that's great. I'm also using it a lot in design, and I've actually used them in even, even some, some print design. Now you have to be careful about the resolution when you're using it for print, but... But even then, you know, you can you can cut something out of a photo, and and most of these these especially the new ones, these phones have really good high megapixel cameras on them. So take lots of pictures, and that's going to give you a a unique um, you know library of images that you can use. I, I'll use it a lot of times. You know, I just I see a surface that's got some interesting texture, and I take a picture of it. And then I've got something that I can use, and I use this a lot for, for web especially, is it just has some kind of visual noise and, and, and tactile feeling. I can lower the transparency of that, put a color or filter on it or whatever. But I've got something that's unique. I've captured it. I've got content that I can use. So take pictures. Uh, tip number four is save your money. <laughs> save your money by, by using um, free software. And uh, this month we're recommending Inkscape. Inkscape is, is available on any platform, Mac, Windows, Linux. And uh, it's a vector-based drawing program, illustration program, and design tool. And uh, I just want to briefly talk about software and sort of uh, you know, the philosophy that we're, we're, we're um, I don't want to say adopting, because I don't know if anybody else is doing this. Maybe, they're, maybe they are, but... That, that we're we're sort of coming up with is is using sort of bare minimum of whatever it is until we need something else. So rather than living in Photoshop and saying I have to have Photoshop to be a designer, what what what's like something that's available to anybody? And could I create something with that tool to create something that's truly professional looking and just is you know is is great you know <clears throat> and even you know push the boundaries and make make what I'm creating not so much about the, the, the software and the feature set, but about those micro decisions that we do every day as designers. Is this color good? Is this color, you know, whatever, uh, change layout, fonts, that kind of stuff. And, uh, and if there's, you know, features that you're, you absolutely need to have, you probably already have those, those software packages. But what we're not about is torrenting or pirating software. Um, we're actually, the opposite is we want to support open source developers and and think about what's the next platform out there how could we contribute to that how could we make even better tools and uh, adobe's great and they're making great stuff improvements and and uh, you know feature updates all the time that's awesome um but uh you know we think that there's that there's sort of the you know alternatives uh to that and you know if if you don't need this powerhouse of of tools why go there? Why why live there? Why rely on that? Uh, rely on your your own ability to create decisions 
even with really strict limitations on what you can do, can you create something that's really beautiful? And that's what we're trying to do. And so we're doing a lot of experimentation and research on what's out there. This month we recommend Inkscape. Uh, tip number five, and this kind of goes along with create, you know, taking your own photos, is create your own assets. You know, use your own content and create your own libraries, and be organized on your on your computer. Create folders and you know hierarchy. Create structure for yourself to, to you know be able to quickly go into and say, I'm, "There's my texture. I'm going to use that. Here's my icon set. I'm going to use that." And if you're creating these things yourself, you have one. You don't have to be worried about licensing. You don't have to worry about you know, can I use this commercially? Can I sell this to somebody else? If you've created your own stuff, you do what you want. It's yours. Um, but you know, also, and we have one available now, is uh, we're, we'd like to share these assets. And whether they're, they're created for, from scratch or whether they're license-free, things that we've sort of manicured. You know, there's a lot of great uh, libraries out there, whether it's you know, for icons or vector shapes or fonts or whatever, that are license-free. And we're really careful about that. So any of our packs, you don't even have to worry about. Go ahead and use them however you want. Um, but we've also sort of manicured them, and, and you know we're, we, we're curating these these kind of um, asset packs, and uh, it's really helping us because uh, you know it, we're not constantly looking for things out there. We can we can say you know what we've we've taken the time to create our own sort social media icon pack, and that's the one that we're going to use because that's the one that we like. And so tip number five: create your own assets or use ours. All right, that's it for, for today, guys. Thank you for watching. Check out our other uh, videos. There's lots of series that we're doing right now. You can, you can uh, check them out on our YouTube channel. And uh, hopefully this had some value to you. Have a great Monday and a great week.